Welcome back to the Hard Run Box News Corner. Lots of big topics emerged this week, including some actual legitimate concrete information on next-gen GeForce cards and a few Intel-related stories. AMD also, of course, launched second-gen Threadripper this week, which we already covered earlier with our comprehensive review, in case you missed that. So yeah, all up, it's been pretty massive on the news front. Let's kick things off by looking at NVIDIA's latest teaser for next-gen GeForce cards. I'm sure a lot of you have already seen this, but just in case you missed it, NVIDIA posted a video titled B4 The Game to hype their event at Gamescom that's happening on August 20th. At this point, it's virtually a certainty that NVIDIA will announce new GeForce cards on that day, which is actually only a few days from now, so that's pretty exciting. I think the evil in me thinks it'd be extremely funny if NVIDIA came out and hosted an entire event on August 20th without mentioning new GeForce force cards whatsoever to the shock and disappointment of thirsty gamers worldwide but it seems like that's not going to happen instead we're in for a boring old launch event however the launch date isn't the interesting thing about that video keen viewers spotted a number of easter eggs in the video that point to the name of nvidia's next generation geforce cards there's been a fair bit of discussion surrounding whether nvidia will go with the gtx 1180 or gtx 2080 for this generation but it seems from this teaser video that the name nvidia has chosen is the rtx 2080 yep rtx 2080 Video Cards has a neat list of all the Easter eggs in the video, mostly from the various chat apps shown for a split second. The key ones are stuff like not underscore 11 and plenty of references to 20 like Mac 20 and Zenith 20. There's also a username of Roy Tex with RT and X capitalized, which again suggests RTX 2080 naming. This fits with the naming scheme for Nvidia's new Quadro GPUs, which are called things like the RTX 8000. The reason for RTX branding is the architecture these cards are using, Turing, has a new ray tracing unit. We'll get to the Turing architecture in just a moment, but apparently this includes of ray tracing functionality is large enough to warrant a revamped naming scheme. Steve will be extremely happy to hear it's the GeForce 20 series and not the 11 series because he's been predicting the 20 series since the start of the year despite countless rumors suggesting 11 series branding so he'll be reminding me of that for a long time and no doubt everyone in our Patreon exclusive Discord chat will be hearing about it as well. Nvidia has been using GTX branding for generations. The 200 series was the first line to use GTX as a prefix to the numbered name, but was also used for many generations prior as a suffix for high-end cards like the 9800 GTX. The first ever card to use the GTX name appears to be the GeForce 7800 GTX, which launched in 2005. Anyway, enough of that history lesson for now. Let's hold out until August 20th, where we'll learn more about the RTX 2080. In other interesting NVIDIA news, this week NVIDIA announced their next generation Turing architecture at SIGGRAPH 2018. This is almost certainly the architecture that will be used for the GeForce 20 series, though at SIGGRAPH NVIDIA was focused entirely on the architecture for compute cards and in fact announced a new series of Quadro products. As Turing will be used for the RTX 2080 most likely, let's take a look at what we can expect. And Nantech has a great article on the specifics. But we're going to be taking a bit of a higher level look. The SM, which is very important for gaming workloads, packs up to 16 teraflops of single precision compute performance, and that's compared to 13 teraflops in Pascal. So that's a 23% uplift in compute performance. But of course, that will only be unleashed in the highest end configuration. With Pascal, that was the Titan XP with the little p. That saw nearly the full 13 teraflops unleashed, while the GTX 1080 Ti was more around 11 teraflops and the GTX 1080 more like 9 teraflops. With the GeForce 20 series, we'll once again be getting that top-end performance with a Titan-class product, but with Turing, we can expect it to outperform the best Pascal card. It should also outperform NVIDIA's Volta architecture, the fully unlocked Quadro GV100, packs 14.8 teraflops of compute power, indicating Turing built on the same 12 nanometer process will improve performance by around 8%. A large uplift from Pascal is possible as NVIDIA is jumping from 16 nanometers down to 12 nanometers. 
Not as relevant for gaming workloads, Turing includes a tensor core for deep learning compute type stuff. This is a specialized unit and it's designed for low precision compute with 125 teraflops of FP16 performance along with new support for int8 and int4 at a huge 250 and 500 teraops respectively. New to Turing and something that will no doubt be interesting for both compute workloads and gaming is the specialized RT core, which is a hardware unit that provides accelerated ray tracing. Top end Turing GPUs will be capable of processing 10 billion rays per second, which is a 25 times improvement on Pascal, which does not have an accelerated ray tracing scheme. This will be key to improving ray tracing performance for rendering workloads in 3D design, but I suspect it will also help bring ray tracing to games for significantly improved light at least in a limited capacity with the first generation of the RT core in GeForce products. For memory, Turing supports GDDR6, the next generation of GDDR memory. It speeds up to 14 gigabit per second, at least initially. Samsung has GDDR6 available up to 16 gigabit per second. However, for now, we're looking at the more common 14 gigabit per second configuration. On a 384-bit bus, which is the widest Turing supports, GDDR6 at 14 gigabit per second will provide 672 gigabytes per second of bandwidth, which is up 23% on the fastest GDDR5X configuration the Titan XP. It's also faster than the HBM2 included with the Titan V, and of course that used a massive 3092-bit bus. Other features in Turing include native support for real-time 8K HEVC encoding with a 25% improved bitrate, 8K DisplayPort support, NVIDIA's new Virtual Link connector for VR headsets, and NVLink that provides 100 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. It's hard to say exactly what is included in the largest fully unlocked Turing GPU in terms of core configuration and so forth. However, we do know it features 18.6 billion transistors and that's down slightly from the 21.1 billion included with Volta's GV100. This 18.6 billion transistor Turing GPU is being used in the new Quadro RTX 8000 card. And that card provides 16 teraflops with 4,608 CUDA cores, which suggests a fully unlocked Turing GPU has 4,608 cores. There are also 570 76 tensor cores and with the RTX 8000 you'll be getting 48 gigabytes of GDDR6 for a cool $10,000. The RTX 6000 gives you the same compute performance but just 24 gig of GDDR6 for $6,300. Anantec are estimating clock speeds for these Quadro cards at 1730 megahertz to achieve 16 teraflops of performance. There's a possibility a consumer grade card will push this even higher like has been the case with past GeForce cards versus Quadro. Anyway, that's the Turing architecture. It'll be interesting to see how it's cut down next week for the launch of the RTX 2080, as we're probably not gonna be getting a fully unlocked GPU straight off the bat. A lot of cool stuff in there though. I spent about half this episode talking about Nvidia's new GPU stuff, so let's move into some other stuff. Intel also used Seagraph to tease some graphics related stuff. The company set up a new Twitter account called Intel Graphics and posted a teaser video talking about all their graphics achievements so far. The video reiterates that Intel is set to unveil their discrete graphics architecture in 2020 to compete against Nvidia and AMD. This isn't new information, but there were a few rumors floating around earlier this year that suggested Intel would be announcing their GPU at CES 2019, which is clearly not true, judging by everything Intel has said so far and factoring in the usual GPU development cycle. But come 2020, the GPU market could be getting a whole lot more exciting. As usual, it wouldn't be a news corner without a few dodgy sounding rumors. Here's Here's one from HD Technologia, a website I hadn't heard of before today, suggesting Intel is working on an X599 Express chipset to support their 28-core HEDT platform. You might remember back at Computex, Intel discussed a new 28-core HEDT CPU and claimed it could run at 5 GHz despite the demo system using exotic cooling and being overclocked. Then it was discovered that CPU is basically a Xeon Platinum 8180 running on a modified server class board with an LGA3647 socket. ASUS had a board called the ROG Dominus, while Gigabyte also had a prototype board with a ridiculous VRM configuration to support the higher chip. Apparently, if this rumor is to be believed, Intel is going ahead with the launch of LGA3647 CPUs in a new HEDT platform that will use an X599 chipset. We'll likely be getting 24 to 28 core CPUs on this platform Platform, while the existing LGA 2066 socket and supporting platforms will be used for up to 18 core CPUs. 
Another quick rumor here, this one from Video Card, showing that the Core i9 9900K and possibly other 9000 series processors will be soldered. An official looking slide suggests a new feature for these chips is a soldered thermal interface material, or what they're calling a stim, among other things. Uh, it can be easy to fake these slides, but it would make sense that an eight core 16 thread CPU like the Core i9 9900K would use solder rather than crappy tim. It shouldn't be too long before these CPUs are announced, so we'll find out soon enough whether this is true. Final news topic of the week, ASUS has announced what they're claiming is the world's slimmest gaming laptop, the ROG Zephyrus S, which joins their already pretty slim Zephyrus lineup. The laptop uses a similar design to the original Zephyrus, but it's obviously a few millimeters slimmer, while still packing an Intel Core i7 8750H CPU and either NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060 or GTX 1070 Max-Q graphics. The laptop should be available in September, although pricing hasn't been announced just yet. That's it for this week's News Corner. Stay tuned for more news next week because NVIDIA will almost certainly be announcing new graphics cards to the joy of all gamers. Subscribe for our special coverage of that and also to get this segment in your inbox every Friday. Like this video if you enjoyed it and I'll catch you in the next one.